In this video I am looking at the process of image trace uh, from taking a raster image and converting it over to a vector I was trying to think of the, a vector graphic in the very least where it's broken up into these small little solid shapes. So first thing I'm going to go ahead and bring in an image with file in place. Uh, something that I have set aside just for this purpose and it's very intentionally an image on a white background. This is where you're going to get your best results if you're trying to, well it really depends on your goal, if you're trying to do what I typically do with image trace and break it down to a silhouette image, uh, this is really effective, but we'll look at the a few of the presets along the way. So first thing when I select it you'll notice the the X across it, this is telling me this is a raster image so it is not vector, it is not infinitely scalable, in fact if I zoom in I can quickly see it pixelate. So this is a raster, this is what we're trying to cure. Up at the very top when you have it selected you'll see the image trace option. I'm going to drop down that little arrow next to it and I'll just switch low fidelity photo first. We'll do that first and it's going to, it's going to have to think about it as it does with any sizable image. <clears throat> and depending on the speed of your computer you'll get very different results here as far as how fast it goes through this process. So with low fidelity image, I can zoom in continually here, and you can see this is now broken up into small little solid shapes. There's a lot of different presets here. Uh, the first one, high fidelity photo, is much closer to an actual image, but it still never looks quite that way. Uh, real Photorealism does not translate well into vector graphics. So more often than not, we're trying to find a way to stylize this to get an interesting result. So let me look at <clears throat> another one of the preset drop downs here. Let's try six colors will do this. Let it run through the process again. <clears throat> It'll have to think about each of these things as it does it. Every time I start to record one of these videos my my throat decides that I'm choking to death so uh, that's the reason for all the throat clearing. Okay now with this one it has broken down. You notice I also got some more of the texture from this one. Some of the texture on top so it really just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for example, what I'm typically going to use, and this is what we're going to move forward with, is black and white logo. This is going to give me a silhouette. Now, it's not done at this point. There's a place where we can also uh, change the settings a little, and you'll notice it has the X over it. It's still telling me that this is not a finished process. This is not yet a vector graphic. So let me grab this little panel. There's a button up here at the top called the Image Trace panel. If I open that up, it gives me numerous options, one of which is the threshold. I also drop down the advanced option. There's two things that are here that are important, one of which is the threshold. This decides how much turns to black and how much turns to white in this particular preset. So if I increase it to get this to a silhouette, I probably have to take it up most of the way to get that drawer to finish out. Too far, too far. There we go. <clears throat> and now I have an actual silhouette of this graphic and then there's also a checkbox down here at the bottom that says ignore white this is going to keep drop out the white and leave only the image because right now the background itself is an object it's a white object so if I click that it'll think about it again and then you'll see it drop down now the X is still over it however and what we have to do is expand this image so there's a button at the top here called expand and in fact I can get rid of the image trace panel now and I'll hit expand and this leaves me with an actual object, you'll notice how the X is gone, that I can change the color of. Uh, however, this does occasionally happen. In fact, I'm glad it did, otherwise I would have forgotten to mention it. You'll notice I tried to choose a color and it went to gray. A lot of times, what this is a result of <clears throat> is changing over. If I see if I can get it visible from my... my little bar on the side has disappeared so I have to go in here and, and reset the workspace uh, to get it back. There we go. Now I have my color picker. Up here at the top, this is where the problem lies. Uh, it's actually in, <clears throat> because I use that particular method of uh, image trace, it changed it over to grayscale. You can see the check mark there. What I have to do is go back and switch it to CMYK again and then I can go through and select colors. 
Um, this probably, maybe someone who knows, uh, which I like to think I'm pretty well schooled in Illustrator, but admittedly I don't know every single feature and function. Maybe someone knows better can correct me, but that actually doesn't seem to happen every single time. It's kind of a, uh, even with the students in class, it's uh, so, so it happens with some, it doesn't happen with others. So <clears throat> just to prepare you for it, uh, that something like that could happen, uh, that's how you do it. You have to make sure the color is visible up here and then use the little drop down to choose and I can take it back to grayscale if I want. But uh, that is something that happens occasionally during image trace that you have to be prepared for. So now I have a shape. It is one solid piece, but I am going to look just really quickly at what would happen if uh, I had left the white attached because there's going to be times that you'll have multiple pieces. I didn't realize how much I did. I just keep hitting Command Z until I get back there, I suppose. <laughs> While we're getting there. This is my least prepared video I think I've done. Here we go. All right, we're back to it. I'm going to go back into the image tracing. I'll take off the ignore white option and I'll put it back in. Now, same thing. I'll expand it. And what you'll see is that these are now part of the same shape and even if I switch it over to CMYK and start choosing things it's got both of them in there so you have to separate them out here's the way that it works what happens is whenever you do an automated process in Illustrator it has a tendency to group things together that are separate objects so in this case it has grouped together the background and the table even though you can still see the table in here because of the outline they have to be taken apart so if I go up to the object menu at the top and use the ungroup option it will only be available to choose if you have a group selected I'll hit ungroup and then I can get rid of the background but then there's also these other little pieces in here that I have to get rid of as well and this is why it's best to use the ignore white method even though it is doable to get yourself to a finished piece uh, it just saves time and gives you a better result <clears throat>